All right, Jay here. Today I want to talk to you about swim baits. And when I say swim baits, I mean the bigger swim baits that you would use around bridges, inlets, maybe off the beach or in a spillway. I'm not talking about the uh, little quarter ounce, uh, 16th ounce ones that you'd be throwing up on the flat. Now today we're talking about the bigger swim baits. All right, before I go any further, I want to just talk to you about some of my other videos because I don't want to repeat everything in this video that I've already said in some of these other videos. But if you're going to use a swim bait and you're going to use it at night and you're going to be fishing from a bridge, a jetty, or a spillway, a lot of what I'm not saying in this video is covered in these other ones. So if you go to my channel, Adventures of Jay Linesider, and you look under the playlist, Jay's instructional videos, you're going to see something called flare hawks, using flare hawk jigs for snook. That covers uh, a lot of things that you need to know for swim baits as well. And then bridge fishing for snook. Um, and also mullet run and shadow lines. Talks about a lot of the same things that uh, I would have covered here, but I've already covered them in some of these other instructional videos. Um, because what I do when I go fishing for snook at night is I'll bring a flare hawk, I'll bring a swim bait, and I'll bring a, swim, uh, a shrimp tail jig, which I'm gonna make another video about how to use those. And my theory is that I'm gonna try to get them to bite, try to get these snook to bite on either the flare hawk, which is probably going to be their first choice, my swim bait, which is going to be my next choice, or my um, shrimp tail jig will, will be my last choice. So all three of those things will be on one of my rods. Maybe I'll bring two flare hawks. Maybe I'll have the you know chartreuse color. Maybe I'll have a blue color, or maybe I'll have the gambler on one. Maybe I'll have the NLBN on the other. You know who knows what I'm doing, or maybe I'll just cut them off and you know start over and uh, switch things up from what I originally planned. But that's my plan to get the fish to either bite on a flare hawk, a swim bait, or a shrimp jig. Uh, so some of these things that I'm not going to cover right now are incorporated in some of these other videos. All right, one of the most important things about the swim bait is, as I briefly mentioned before, is the speed at which you pull it. You want to make sure the tail's going back and forth like this, something along these lines, um, and is vibrating. The vibration is very important because a snook, as you see here, has this lateral line on it, and that lateral line is a lot more sensitive in a snook than other fish. So the vibration of the tail will help the snook find your bait in addition to the vision and the sight of the bait itself. So if it's pitch dark, the snook is going to be able to feel the vibration of the tail and bite your swim bait. And similarly, in the daytime, the snook uh, in murky water will feel the vibration of that tail and it'll clue them in to where your bait is and that something's coming and that they're going to get ready to bite it. So um, fish the swim baits in the daytime where you wouldn't fish a flare hawk. Flare hawks are mostly for at night or low light. Uh, swim baits you can use day or night. So that's one of the big advantages of the swim bait. You can fish them in the daytime. They'll work and primarily why they work is because the snook feels that vibration before it even sees the bait and then it hits it. A flare hawk, who knows what they think it is, but you know, it doesn't have any vibration. Um, and if it gets a good look at the flare hawk, it might turn off on it. So that's why you want to use the flare hawk in the low light situations and complete dark situations. And you want to use the swim bait in the murky waters, daylight, and you can use it at night, obviously, too. Um, but yeah. That's the advantage of the swim bait. You can use this in the daytime. Um, you can use it even on the flats or you know under docks and things like that. Whereas the flare hawk, you wouldn't want to do that. I like to just pull it straight at a steady speed, so where it's vibrating. I don't like to jig it up and down like this. I mean, you can, but I I just don't do it. I feel like just making a steady forward motion. Um, you know is good enough that's what's going to get them to bite they're going to track it and then 
chomp on it as soon as they um, you know get behind it and start tracking it for a little while so yeah I don't want to jerk it up and down now when I get into the shrimp tail jigs I do jerk them up and down because that's a shrimp's fleeing method a shrimp will jump up and down to flee so but a bait fish you know the bait fishes don't don't go up and down like this when they flee but shrimp do so my theory is you know pull the baits the flare hawks the swim baits straight shrimp they go up and down up and down and so that's why I, I manipulate them differently than i do the swim baits but if you have success you know giving them some action up and down you know by all means do that you can certainly you can speed them up stall them let them fall and then reel them up you can do that but i wouldn't give it a lot of motion you know especially at night um you want them to be able to hit it not jerk it out of their mouth before they can hit it you want them to you know have the best chance that they can uh, to hit it you don't want to say oh you know they, they think oh that one got away from me uh, you know and then they might not bite again for a little while Big snook, especially the really good ones and the big ones that have been around for a long time, they're not going to keep popping bait, at, you know, one time after another, you know, every 10 seconds. They're going to pop every five minutes or so. Who knows? Two, every two minutes or whatever, depending, I guess, how hungry they are. But big old snook, he's not going to waste a lot of energy to keep missing. So, yeah, if you want the big old snook, you don't want to make it so hard for him to hit it that they, that they miss it and then wait another five minutes for they even try so that's what i like to do i just like to pull it straight and steady now one of the things um that i probably did mention in some of the other videos but i can't emphasize it enough the angle of the retrieve is the most important thing to get the bite you need to pull the bait fish in the direction that a snook is thinking that it a bait fish is going to come with the tide so you know you may have to move where you're casting from if you're on the boat or if you're on the bridge or from the pier or on the jetty you know you may have to move to change your angle um to to approach the the fish from the correct angle the angle is the single most important thing they'll probably be in a shadow line they'll probably be somewhere out of a current and they're expecting it to come through the from the light into the shadow at a certain angle and then you know from experience they're going to think that yes this fish is you know dead meat because i've caught a bunch of fish here before and that's what you know that's what works that's the, what's going on in the snook's mind and uh, if you pull it from the wrong angle they're just gonna say oh I, I don't think that fish is real or i don't have a good chance to get it so the angle is the number one important thing to get to the bite way more important than color or any of these other things it's the angle also the depth obviously if if it's 10 or 15 feet deep you know you're going to want to pull it close to the bottom either right on the bottom or you're going to want to be like a foot off the bottom um, if the fish are sitting on the bottom sometimes they're in the middle sometimes they're on the top you know sometimes they're popping mullet and shrimp on the top in those cases you want to pull your bait along the top but whatever it is just keep trying different angles keep trying different depths keep trying different retrieves and different speeds especially if you know the snook are there and they're just not biting and then obviously you know after a while you got to change lures change from your you know swim bait to your flare hawk to your shrimp tail uh, or whatever else you know you have in your tackle bag because uh, sometimes you might throw your whole tackle bag at them and you know they're just not biting and then the tide switches and then boom all of a sudden they bite so yeah maybe it's the tide maybe the tide's wrong but you know if they're in a feeding mode you know uh, and they're up in a feeding zone they're still going to want that bait to come at the correct depth and the correct angle for what their experience has been at that particular place and why they've been successful as hunters at that particular location so yeah the angles all the most important so are the shadow lines which i discuss in the other videos and so are the depths and of course the speed the speed's important um you know if you if they're really hitting aggressively you can pull it faster 
they're not hitting too aggressively, you know, you're going to want to pull it slower and near the bottom. So those are some things to keep in mind with the swim baits. You may be familiar with the NLBN. This is their 8 inch and I also have their 5 inch um, and you also need to realize when you're using a swim bait there's various jig heads you can use. You can use these nice ones from NLBN that have a screw lock uh, situation which I think I have one right here. That's nice to hold your jig on there but they're kind of expensive. Um, they do have very nice hooks and they come in a variety of weights. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can get these and get these uh, swim baits. My particular favorite is um, the Gambler 6 inch um, and this one uh, came or I rigged this one with one of the weights I got from Gambler but you can use any variety of jig heads uh, on your swim bait but this is my favorite one is the six inch I got a box of like a hundred right from the factory at a, at a very reasonable price this is their eight inch you you know it's got a lighter weight um, this is I think a three-quarter ounce yeah well it's a one ounce this is a one ounce size and um, you know this will run medium uh, if you run it fast it'll run on the top um, the thing you'll notice that I like about the these gamblers is the look at the size of that tail. Um, now the NLBN has a fairly big tail for its size. Let me compare apples to apples. Here's the eight inch NLBN, and here's the gambler. This is more of a, a box shape on the NLBN, and this is more of a it's like a teardrop shape on the gambler and that will give it a different different action through the water and um, my luck has been really good with the gambler brand and they're also cheaper than the nlbn so i prefer what works and in this case what works happens to be uh, cheaper in price but that's me i do have quite a few of these and i still use them um, and I also got a bunch of samples from Hooked on Jigs. Um, they gave me all these sizes. I, you could see this tail is uh, similar to the NLBN. Uh, profile is very skinny compared to uh, the Gambler profile. And I have a lighter uh, weight on the head too. Uh, that'll allow me to throw it, you know, I could even throw this with a light spinning rod on the flats if I wanted to, but it's more ideally, ideally set up for the top, and this looks kind of like a ladyfish, ladyfish colors, um, so that's what you're trying to resemble with this one. Um, a lot of other people like a lot of other kinds of brands. I know um, a lot of people like these Storm Wild eyes i think they were called um i didn't have a whole lot of luck with these but you know you could see they have a smaller tail smaller tail means to me it's going to have less vibration and you're not going to be able to pull it through the water as fast the big thing with swimming with swim baits is you you're going to want to make sure whatever swim bait you're throwing you got to make sure you're not pulling it so fast that this tail is not doing a vibration like this you want to see that kind of action um, you don't want to plane it out of the water um, so you know throw it where you can see it if you're not used to that particular swim bait and make sure the tail is is doing a back and forth back and forth back and forth motion like that that that's what you want to see with your swim bait um, if it's just like a blur you know uh, and it's not going straight you're you probably don't have it hooked right or you know you're pulling it too fast next i want to talk to you um, about the jig heads i've kind of briefly mentioned it but um yeah you can spend all kinds of money on jig heads but you want to make sure it has a good thick hook like this uh, no live bait needed has nice thick hook and you want something that's going to hold your bait on there um, 
I made these jigs myself, and I used a do it mold. Um, this is an H style jig, uh, jig head, and it has a little keeper right there. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a little keeper right there that helps keep your swim bait on there and has a little gripper. Um, and I don't know whether the colors even matter. I, I have some that, you know, don't even have a color that I've made. But anyway, they have a 8 hook that I always am discussing and saying, yeah, you know what? You want something that's not going to straighten out, you know, with your 50-pound your braid and your 80-pound uh, mono and your lockdown drag. So the strength of the hook is important. I got another one I made here. This is a hot lips style. Um, it doesn't have as good of a hook keeper here. It's got this big old flange thing. I guess if you gob a lot of super glue on there, you know, your swim bait will stick on there. Uh, and then this one I got from a store. It's kind of like one that I think they use um, in, in Boca Grand Pass for tarpon. But, yeah, you can use this as a swim bait hook also. Now, these came from Gambler. They have, like, a little... Um, spot here it'll help your little flange to keep your um, swim bait on there um, and this one does too and also you can tell they're different weights this one's obviously heavier I think it's like a two ounce here and this is probably a one ounce here and um, you're also going to want to match your jig head with your swim bait so if you have a, a longer bait like this one you know you're going to want to have a hook that comes and you know goes all the way back somewhere in this range so that you know you're not if your hook only comes to here you know you you got all this tail section back there you may get some short bites on it so use an appropriate length hook for your particular swim bait if you want to not miss the strikes but yeah a lot of these swim baits i've been talking about you know you buy just the bait and then you know you gotta you gotta add in your own hook uh, however you're going to do it uh, whatever you prefer um, but make sure it is a heavy duty hook whatever kind you get or make your own like i did and uh, you can save yourself a lot of money. These, you know, I made a long time ago. They've been banging around in my tackle box for years. And, um, you know, I probably made 100, 100, 200 at a time. And they, they last me a long, long time. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't matter if the paint's banged up a little bit. Fish barely gets a glimpse at it. If they really checked it out good, they would know it wasn't a real mullet or whatever they think it is. Now, where can you use the swim baits? Just about anywhere. You can use a swim bait off a beach. You can use a swim bait off the jetties. You can uh, in the inlets. You can use a swim bait at a spillway. They're great spillway baits, and you can also use them at bridges. You can also cast them under docks. Just about anywhere on the flats. You know, you're going to obviously use lighter jigs if you do use them on the flats, um, and it won't be probably these bigger jigs that we're talking about, but you can if you want if you got a deeper flat you know you can you can pull one of these with a half ounce uh, jig head on it and uh, you can get some bites from probably some of the bigger snook um, especially in the canals things like that you can throw them just about anywhere there's not there's almost nowhere you can't throw one of these bigger jigs maybe where there's a lot of weeds you know and it's really shallow those aren't the ideal spots flats you know of uh, two feet or less those aren't ideal for these jigs but just about anywhere else these big uh, jig heads with these big jigs are good now what do i use on these jigs it depends as, as far as the uh, leader um if i'm at night like the flare hawks i'll be using the 80 pound mono with the 30 to 50 pound braid if i'm fishing the daytime you know i might be using a, a much lighter setup and i might be using like um 15 pound um braid and i might be using like 30 pound mono maybe 40 if i'm using some of these really big um jigs and then even then you know i got a good chance i'm going to get frayed off and that's when something like the spool tech might come into play 
you might want to use the you know the three or four inch uh, spool tack and um, use that on the flats and use the lighter leader use the 30 and then you get the cable that runs out on that and then you get the abrasion resistance and you know you got all of a sudden you got unlimited um, resistance uh, capacity as far as fraying um, because of the wire on the spool tech so those are some of the things to think about you know when you're thinking about where to use um, a swim bait you know it all depends on the bait you know and it all depends on what profile bait is prevalent uh, prevalent um, you know if, if the mullet are big you know you're going to want to throw a bigger uh, profile if the mullet are, are small or you know they're just hitting little baits um, you're going to want to use a littler uh, profile in the winter time generally the snook are feeding on shrimp and smaller baits so you know you're going to want to downside in the winter in the spring and the fall they're trying to you know um, the trend of fatten up in the fall for the long winter when they're not going to eat so they're going to eat a bigger bait and then in the spring they're going to get hungry and they're going to you know gradually get um, and want bigger and um, larger baits uh, so yeah you're going to want to have bigger baits in the spring summer and fall in the winter not so big but these are just generalities you know there's rules and rules are made to be broken and you can catch them on anything that's what's great about snook the snook you know they're one of the only fish that can be found at the spillways um you know in complete fresh water and then they can be found offshore in 400 feet of water next to wrecks and other submerged objects they can be found in the gulf they can be found in the atlantic they can be found in you know the springs um way far north um you know up in crystal crystal river you know all over the state of florida where there's any kind of warm pocket of water these snook will be found and then of course that means you know you can catch them on the beach you can catch them at the spillways you can catch them on the piers you know you can catch them on the bridges you know you can catch them in such a variety of places you catch them on golf course and freshwater lakes that's what's so great about this nook that's what i love about them all right i think i'm about talked out on this subject so you know Put your comments below. If you got any questions, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Tight lines. Jay.